Hello everyone. Welcome back to Christine Smiles. I am Dr. Apoor Bhav and today we are speaking about the gingival connective tissue components as well as the blood supply of gingiva. So stay with us till the end. The links of the previous parts have been given below. So if you haven't watched them yet, now is the time to do it. So let's begin. Now the gingival connective tissue it is also called as the lamina propria and it contains two layers. So we have the papillary layer and the reticular layer. The papillary layer is adjacent to the epithelium whereas the reticular layer is contrast with the periosteum. Now this has two com of components. We have the cellular component and the extracellular component. The extracellular component consists of the fibers and brown substance whereas when you consider the cellular component there are various cells which are present in the gingival connective tissue first we have the fibroblast now this is derived from undifferentiated progenitive mesenchymal cells it is elongated spindle shape and it has a role in development maintenance and repair of the gingival connective tissue so it synthesizes the collagen fibers, elastic fibers, glycoproteins, glycosaminoglycans and is also involved in regulation of collagen degradation. So this is a very important cell which is present. Next we have the mast cells. Now these cells are present throughout the body of the gingiva and are numerous in the connective tissue of the mucosa. These produce heparin and histamine. Next we have the fixed macrophages also known as histiocytes. These are components of the mononuclear phagocyte system or the reticular endothelial system. And these are derived from monocytes. The other connective tissue also contains adipose cells. Then we have eosinophils, lymphocytes, plasma cells which are present in the gingival connective tissue. Coming to the extracellular compartment of the gingival connective tissue, we have three types of fibers which are present, the collagen fibers, reticulin fibers and elastic fibers. The collagen fibers, what we see is predominantly type 1 collagen. Now this provides a tensile strength. We also see the presence of type 3, which is the fetal collagen fiber and is important in wound healing. Type 4, which is present in the basement membrane. Then we have type 6, which is present in the blood vessels and maintains the integrity of the blood vessel, as well as type 7 which are present in the anchoring fibers. Then elastic fibers are composed of the oxygen, elaunine and elastin. Oxygen fibers, these are scarce in the gingiva and they are present numerous in the PDA. Whereas elastin is present only in association with the blood vessels. Now all these fibers are densely packed and anchored in the acellular extrinsic fiber cementer. Now according to Page and Schroeder, we have two types of gingival fibers. We have the principal fibers and the secondary fibers. In the principal fibers, we have the dentogingival, alveologingival, dentoperiosteal, transeptal, circular. Whereas in the secondary, we have periosteogingival, interpapillary, intercircular, intergingival, semicircular and transgingival. Now the main functions of these fibers is to brace the marginal gingiva to the tooth, unite the marginal gingiva to the adjacent attached gingiva, provide rigidity required to withstand the masticatory forces, provide stability to the tooth and also help to maintain the epithelial seal around the tooth. 
we will check them out individually now. So we first have the dentu gingival. As the name suggests, these fibers they provide a connection between the tooth and the gingiva. So they are present on the buccal and the lingual surface, the against proximal surface, and they are embedded in the cementum just beneath the epithelium at the base of the surface. So what they do is they provide support to the gingiva, and they have a half life of around 25 days. Next we have the alveolar gingiva. Again, when you break it up here, these they provide a connection between the bone and the gingiva. They insert it to the lamina proprata. So they attach they attach the attached gingiva to the alveolar bone. Next we have the dentoperiosteal. When you spread it out, what they do is they extend from the tooth and insert into the alveolar crest to blend with the fibers of the periosteum. So it anchors the tooth to the pedia. Then we have the circular fibers which are present around the tooth. So these are the circular fibers. These encircle the tooth in a cuff or a ring fashion. These are present in the marginal gingiva and they maintain the contour of the marginal gingiva. Then we have lastly the transeptal fibers. These are present interproximally. So they connect the cementum of one tooth to the cementum of the other tooth. So if they lie in the area between the epithelium and the base of the surface and crest of interdental form. Now since these are present interdentally, what they do is they protect the interdental bone and also maintain the relationship of the adjacent teeth. These reform rapidly after excision with a half life of 8.4 days. So this was all about principal fibers. So with a quick recap here, we have five types of principal fibers: the dentogingival, alveologingival, dentoperiosteal, transeptal, and circular. Periosteal gingival. What happens here is it, extend, it attack, extends from the periosteum of the alveolar bone to the attached gingiva. So it helps to attach the gingiva to the alveolar bone. For the sake of clarity, let's divide this. Say this is the base, the buccal or facial surface. This is the lingual surface, mesial surface, and the distal surface of the tooth. Now we have first the interpapillary fibers. These are seen and these are the green ones are the interpapillary fibers. They are present in the interdental gingiva. Okay, so they extend facial lingual and they provide support to the interdental gingiva. Next we have the transgingival fibers. Transgingival fibers they follow some, some like an S-shaped pattern. What they do is they attach the proximal surface of one tooth, they traverse the interdental space. They go around the buccal or the lingual surfaces of the adjacent teeth, again towards the interdental space and they attach the proximal surface of the next tooth. So say these fibers, they come over here, from the mesial surface they start, sorry from the distal surface they are starting, it traverses the interdental space, goes around lingually and then in, it again comes to the interdental space of the other two teeth and here it inserts on the mesial surface. So what these fibers do is they secure the alignment of these teeth in the arch. Next we have the intercircular fibers. Intercircular fibers they extend from the cementum on the distal surface of the tooth then they splay lingually over here as well as buccally and they insert into the mesial surface of the next tooth. Not the adjacent tooth but the next tooth. These are the intercircular fibers. Then we have intergingival fibers. These are present in the attached gingiva and they run parallel to the teeth in the vestibular and the oral surfaces and they provide contour and support for the attached gingiva. Interpapillary, they support the interdental gingiva. Intergingival support the attached gingiva. And next we have semicircular. Semicircular, they attach the proximal surfaces of the teeth below the CEJ. 
So as we see here, these green fibers are the semicircular fibers. They extend from the mesial surface of the tooth and they go they form half a circle and insert into the distal surface of the same tooth. These are the semicircular fibers. Ground substance is a medium in which the connective tissue cells are embedded. It is what is present between the fibers and the cells. The main function of the ground substance is to maintain normal function of the connective tissue and transport water, metabolites and nutrients. It is composed of proteoglycans, mainly the hyaluronic acid. Then we have glycoproteins like fibronectin and we have chondroitin sulfate. Out of these, the proteoglycans, they contain glycosoaminoglycans. Or the, these are carbohydrate units which are attached to each other by proteins. Now these are macromolecules or large molecules of which owing to their structure and hydration, they exert resistance to deformation. Resistance to deformation. Remember this term. That means they do not allow the gingiva to deform easily. They regulate the consistency of the gingiva. So if for some reason these macromolecules are suppressed okay, or they are deformed, then the gingiva gets suppressed. The consistency of the gingiva gets altered. When the pressure is eliminated, the macromolecules regain their original form and the gingival consistency comes back to its original form. So these macromolecules, they are responsible for the resilience of gingiva. The gingiva receives its blood supply mainly through the supraperiosteal blood vessels which are the terminal branches of the sublingual artery. Then we have the vessels of the periodontal ligament which extend into the gingiva and anastomose with the capillaries in the surface area. And we also have the arteriodes which emerge from the crest of the interdental septum and extend parallel to the crest of the bone and anastomose with the vessels of the PDL with the, cap with, of, with the capillaries in the gingival sulcus. Now, the gingival vasculature pattern is different in case of inflammation and non-inflammation. So what happens is in absence of inflammation, the vascular network is arranged in a regular, repetitive and layered pattern. Whereas when there is inflammation, this what is regular in non-inflamed areas becomes irregular. Then it is all haphazard. Okay, it is not repetitive. There will be all or all the vascular patterns which are arranged in a haphazard manner. You can have loops, maybe some, some vessels may be looped or they may be dilated, convoluted appearance. Okay, just pardon the diagram here. Lymphatics play a role in removing the excess fluid cellular protein debris. So it kind of controls the diffusion and helps to resolve inflammation. So if you if you see the labial and the lingual gingiva of the mandibular incisors, it drains to the submental lymph node. This area, labial and lingual of the gingiva of the mandibular incisors. Then if it is the palatal aspect of the maxilla, it drains into the deep cervical lymph nodes okay then the buccal of the maxilla and the buccal and the lingual of the mandibular premolar molar region it drains into submandibular lymph nodes whereas the mandibular third molar region it drains into juculotigastric lymph nodes the lymphatic drainage progresses from the connective tissue papillae 
interventral papilla into the periosteum into the regional lymph nodes. That is the submaxillary of the lymph nodes.